as an international educator, I had the privilege to live and work in many different countries. I lived in Turkey, in Myanmar, in China, in Spain, in Germany, and in Indonesia. I loved what I did, and I did what I loved, which was teaching drama and film studies. The world was mine. What changed the situation? Cancer. In March 2015, I flew to Germany because my father had cancer and I wanted to be with him. A few days after my arrival, I went to a checkup myself. Not because I felt bad, I felt great. It was April 1st when the doctor told me, you have a tumor. I could not believe it. I thought she was joking because it was April 1st, except she was not laughing. And because before I could even think, I was in a hospital. I had my first surgery, this one. Not pleasant. It took me a while to recover, and when I got a little bit better, the phone was ringing. It was my, my surgeon. Her voice was empathetic, her questions alarming. I had ovarian cancer. My world was upside down, and nothing, nothing, nothing was the same anymore. It was, as we say in the movie business, it was a point of no return. And the central question was raised. There's always a central question in the movies. Will I ever get out of this? The next day after the phone call, I had to see the surgeon. And she told me what needed to be done. I felt terrible. And something, something in this meeting happened. It was as if a glass wall came down and I couldn't reach the other people anymore. I had the feeling I was no longer part of this life. I was disconnected. I was unframed. That day, I went to a park because I had to digest the information. I just wanted to be with normal people because that's how I felt. There was me and normal people me and healthy people, people with normal problems and me with a problem as big as the Mount Everest. I went into the hospital again and this time I had major surgery, this one, followed by chemotherapy, physiotherapy, rehab, and during this time, I stayed with friends in the countryside, with friends and a dog, and nature was good for me. But how did I feel? Not so good. I could hardly walk. I felt sick every morning. I had splitting headaches. My hearing was bad, so I felt even more disconnected. My world was small. It was the bad. I lost my autonomy. My body was not my body anymore. I was skinny, but I had elephant legs. They took out 52 lymph nodes. It was not pleasant, and my world was the opposite of exotic. It was not good. While I got better, and I got better after a year, my father's health went down. It was a very difficult time, but I got through this. And very, very often people ask me, how did you do this? And every single time my answer is the same, with love, empathy, and smiles. I had a tremendous support from my partner, from my family, from my friends, from my students around the world, and from the parents of my students. I was surrounded by love and empathy. Now, what can you do if you have a partner, if you have a friend or a loved one with cancer? But before 
I share my six simple but powerful ideas with you, let me ask you two questions. Please raise your hand if you have a friend, a family member, or someone you know with cancer. I do. Okay. Please raise your hand if you sometimes feel uncomfortable, not sure what to do. I do. That's what I thought. But it doesn't have to be this way. And here is what I've learned. Smile. A smile can be very powerful. And when I was in the hospital, I got a postcard from one of my students. And the postcard said, if you don't have a smile, I will give you one of mine. And believe me, when you have cancer, you don't have much to smile about. I had a mirror in my hospital room so I could see how people would enter. And it made my day when my partner, my family, my friends or my students, the doctors, the nurses, the cleaners, came into my room and smiled at me because it meant hope encouragement, and I felt connected again. Love. When I talk about love, I mean love that simply gives without wanting something in return. It is love when your partner comes to the hospital room and says, today's flowers are from me. And the next day says, these flowers are from Bob and Patty from Thailand. The third day, these flowers are from Dr. George, your colleagues, and your students. It is love when your friend is sitting beside your hospital bed while you are waking up from major surgery. It is love when your father comes to the hospital room with his oxygen tank on his back and says, I was worried about you. And it is love when your sister, who is not much of a talker, noticed that or, or that you like the shirt she is wearing and brings a present the next day and guess what it is. I think you get the picture. Empathy. And when I talk about empathy, I mean the capability of jumping or stepping into somebody else's shoes. Very important. Keep your ego out when you go to a hospital room and have a friend with cancer. Keep your ego out. It is not about you. Don't take anything personally. If your friend doesn't show up for your big vernissage, opening night, birthday party, it's not that he or she doesn't want to. It's simply your friend has nothing to give and needs all the energy for himself or herself. Don't take it personally. And please, do not compare yourself to other friends. Don't think, why can't he drive her to chemotherapy and not me? Support is not a competition. Your friend has to deal with a lot. So please, don't do that to yourself and don't do it to your friend. Communication. Words are very powerful. They can destroy a person, or they can make a person strong. If you enter the hospital room or their home, choose your words wisely. Be empathetic, of course, but listen carefully. Listen to what he has to tell you, not what you want them to tell you. Don't ask rhetorical questions. Ask open-ended questions and be positive. And please, 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 don't multitask in a hospital room. If you are too busy and too important, you know what? Then don't come. Don't show up. Go home, do your business, and come back when it's more comfortable for you. But if you're in the hospital room, be present. And make decisions with your friend, not for your friend. Imagine how you would feel. And, of course, send little signs of love. A letter, 
postcards, uh, messages, something like that. I got a message from a student once, and um, well, there's nothing on it because I know the text by heart, but it said, Dear Miss Ilonka, I love you, grade two. You are my best drama teacher ever. I was probably the first one. <laughs> Remember when we did the rainbow fish? It was so much fun. Please, Miss Ilonka, please come back, even though you have cancer. You know what? You're so dramatic. I love it. <laughs> Little signs of love. Positivity. Please be positive and encouraging. A cancer patient can't afford the luxury of a single negative thought. Not one. So, it is and it was encouraging for me when my father, who was dying, came into the hospital room and said, we can fight this monster. It was encouraging when my partner said, we will get through this. It was encouraging when another friend of mine said, you're in very good hands. She knew the surgeon. And finally, when the surgeon said, a sentence you've probably heard from a German politician, Sie schaffen das. You can do this. That's all I needed. That's what kept me going. And last but not least, practical help. Maybe you're not a person who wants to go to the hospital. Maybe you're afraid or you're not a talker. That's okay because we have so much to give. There's so much to do. When you have cancer, there is so much paperwork to do and it is overwhelming when you are sick. So, you can make phone calls, set up appointments, uh, you can scan stuff to the health insurance, print stuff, you can go shopping, unload the dishwasher, talk to your friend, exercise with your friend, or simply sit with your friend, eat popcorn, and watch a movie. So, audience, here's what I want you to take home. If you should have a friend or a family member with cancer, please don't freeze or don't disappear. You don't have to be perfect, but your friend needs you. And please remember, be loving and empathetic. And don't forget to smile. Thank you. Thank you.